Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate this. Like, this is literally my favorite day of the week. I love Sunday because I get to um, commune with you guys, relate with you guys. I love it. Um, today's sermon is called Answer the Question. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done, and I thank you for um, just being with me and hanging with me through the week and through my life, and I just pray today that you just speak in such a wonderful way to all of us. Um, I pray that your power just be felt through the screen. Say something to touch every every heart differently, Lord Jesus. Teach us today. Holy Spirit, dwell with, with me as I preach your word today. In the name of Jesus, amen. So guys, first I'd like to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the birthday wishes. For those of you who don't know, it was my birthday on uh, Wednesday. So now I'm 38 years old, y'all, and I'm, um, I'm grateful. I'm just grateful, and I'm just expecting great things for this year. So thank you so much for all your birthday wishes. For those of you who I didn't put a love by, I'm so sorry. The, there's probably some birthday uh, wishes that I missed. I tried to get everybody, but there's probably some people that I missed. So I'm sorry, and I love that you stopped on my wall and wished me a happy birthday. You could have, you could have done anything else, but but you didn't, and I'm so uh, grateful. I don't even wish everybody a happy birthday when I see when I see on their walls. So the fact that you did it for me is humbling and honoring. And I just want to say thank you. I was honored. Thank you to all my family. Thank you to all my, all my friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is truly an honor uh, that you've, that God has gifted me the pleasure of just preaching to you and it is truly an honor when you when when I see like one view or eight views or whatever, however many views, because it is a sacred trust. I think when somebody trusts you to speak into their lives and to speak the word of God into your life, I'm so honored and grateful and pleased and all the other words that you have uh, given me the pleasure to do this for 11, almost 12 years, y'all. I've been doing this. Uh, it's just so great. So thank you for all the birthday wishes. So thinking about my birthday and the fact that I'm 38 now, I was, um, I was ruminating this week on John 5. Um, it's about the man at the pool of Bethesda, um, who, who went to the pool for 38 years and who laid at the pool for 38 years and no one would take him to the pool to jump in and get healed. And when Jesus came to him, uh, instead of healing him right away, because Jesus was a boss, like he was totally a boss, 
he wouldn't heal people right away. He would ask them to do things or say something profound and then heal them. And with this man who kept, who, um, who was at the pool, he saw, and Jesus saw him, and Jesus went over to him and asked him one question. And Jesus asked the man, do you want to get well? And instead of this guy answering, yes, I do want to get well. He started with the whole litany of, well, for 38 years, I've sat here and people haven't taken me to the water, there's nobody to, to put me in, and whatever, whatever. He started giving his litany of excuses, like Jesus didn't even ask that. Jesus didn't want a whole, like, Hallmark movie of, well, this happened, this happened, this happened. And it and it's great to tell stories. I love to hear a good story. I love to write stories. I love to tell fictional stories and sermons. I love to t tell real stories about my life. If, if you have been watching me for the past almost 12 year, years, you'll know this, but there's, there's some times where Jesus doesn't want your excuses, he doesn't want the blame game, he doesn't want your anger, he doesn't want your frustration, he just wants you to answer his question. And Jesus said, okay. After he started giving a garage list of why he wasn't heal healed, Jesus healed him and he said to the man, Take up your bed and walk. Take up your bed and walk. So, because I guess he was lying on some kind of bed. I think he had like CP and he was lying on some kind of bed watching everybody get like their healing because this was like healing water that everybody would jump in and get healed. So I guess he was lying on some kind of bed um, when he said, take up your bed and walk. So, and I'm like, okay. Like, like, instead of answering Jesus' question, he gave a lot of excuses. And that's what we do as people, I think. Instead of, when God tells us to do something, sometimes when we feel, um, when we feel that we can't do it or we give an explanation as to, why we're not qualified, or why we don't do it, or why this can't happen. Oh, I'm too old, I'm too young, it's too hard. Um, and we, we give God our story instead of saying, Yes, Lord, uh, we'll do it. We think... We think God needs a soap opera as to, we think God needs our explanation. But all he's saying now is all, I don't need your explanation. All I need is a yes. And he says, I don't need a pretty song, yes. You know that, I say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way. He said, I don't need that kind of yes. I just need a yes. I just need you to say yes. I don't need you to sing yes. I don't need you to song and dance yes. I don't need to yes, maybe. He says, I just need a yes from you. He said, he said, he said some. He said, some of you have been 
answering the wrong question. Some of you, when when I ask you a question, you give me a whole litany of excuses as to why you can't do that. And all I need from you is to answer my question. Don't assume that I need a whole litany of explanations as to why this won't work or why, whatever. I just need you to answer the question. I don't need you to look at other people before answering the question. I don't need you to tell me a story. I just need you to say what to answer what I ask you. And when I was when I was looking at this um, today, uh, yesterday, I was thinking of a courtroom where there's a court case going on. Um, uh, and the crown and the, um, I forget what else they call it here. The, um, crown and the, I forget what else they call it here, but in the States they call it the defense and, uh, prosecution. Uh, so, like, the, the, they, they are, they argue and they try to both prove their side. And the Lord said, there are no sides to prove here. You just have to answer what question I ask you. Will you do this or do you want to get well? And the answer is yes or no. He's like, I don't want you to give me a litany of exclusive of excuses. Just give me your answer. After your answer, we will go from there. And I think a lot of people have been answering a question that God didn't ask. God didn't ask whether you thought you were old enough to do this or young enough or thin enough or because you were a woman or because you were this or because of this sin or that sin or whatever. We read too much into ourselves. We look at our status and we kind of, from our, our status, whether we're male or female or whatever, we, we make judgments whether we're qualified. And the Lord says, you don't know whether you're qualified or not. You don't know what I, what fully, what I called you to do. Um, you only know what I tell you. And he said, stop reading what you want into the situation. When I tell you to do something, stop knowing, stop pretending like you know th that you're not qualified because of this, because of that. It That's only what you've seen. You're not seeing what I see. Ask me what I see about you, not what you see about you. What you see about you is limited. And what I see about you is limitless. And because you, you'll be like, oh, a person with a disability hasn't done that before, hasn't um, CEO her own entertainment company. Um, nobody with a di disability can do that. Nobody with a disability can, can do what I sent you calling me to do, a uh, pastor, a church, and whatever. He said, don't tell me, Rachel, what I was supposed to see in you. Ask me what I do see in you. And I will tell you what you need to know. He said, all I need from you, Rachel, is a yes. I don't need a story as to 
why you can't do this or why it didn't work out before or Lord when I tried that before it didn't work out why would I do it again blah 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 he's he said uh, to me personally he said the door is open now where it wasn't before he said he said people of favor will knock on your door for answers and when they do you'll be ready for them before it was a training ground all those rejections were just training ground all those emails you sent all those songs you wrote all those movies that you've been planning in your head they will all come to pass but I needed you for those years to have training about how to deal with people, how to deal with loss, how to deal with loneliness. I needed you to go through that because one day you will pastor people just like you are now and you can tell them with a surety that you were in the same situation and I got you out of it and no one but me will get the glory and I found find it really interesting that God says t that the uh, that Jesus said take up your bed now with the, or your mat some translation say like so when I think of a bed, I think of a comfortable kind of place where you go and where you sleep at night and it's the most restful place ever. And for those of you married folks, it could be one of the funnest places ever. Um, but, um, but, you know, a place of comfort a place of safety, a place of where you snuggle up and where you sleep. And he, he said, some of, some of you have been snuggle up, have been spiritually snuggling up and sleeping for too long. Some of you have been having um, intimacy, not with your husband or your wife, but with your issue for so long, you, you, we talked, we talk about our relationship with Christ and how it is important. But some of you, the relationship with Christ is overshadowed by your relationship to your issue. We, we have such intimacy with our, our issues. We go to bed with them, we wake up with them, we kiss them, we have babies for them, and it's just, it's just, we, we curdle up with them, we curdle up in self-pity, we curdle up in all these things, and he's like, you, he's like, you may not be married to a person, but honey, you are married to something for us single people. And if you are a married person, he'll say, he would say to you, you're committing polygamy because you're married to more than one thing. You are married to a person, a man or woman, depending on who you are. And you are also married to your issue. He's like, sometimes it is necessary not to divorce a person, but you need to divorce your issue. You need to say, you know what? I'm done with you. You are not sleeping in this bed with me anymore. I had this vision of one time one time of me uh, preaching in a church and uh, here's, um, here's, here's what I would do. 
I would get a whole bunch of pillows, if you could imagine that. I would get a whole bunch of pillows and get somebody to write all these negative words that they say to themselves on these pillows, like fear, frustration, self-loathing, self-hatred, um, all these negative words. And I would get another person in their family to cover, cover the bed with all these pillows. And then that, that person in their family has to dig them out because sometimes we're, we're, we've got so many issues so many um, things about ourselves that we think disqualify us that we are buried under them. We've been buried under fear for years. We've been buried under self-loathing and self-hatred for years. We've been buried under self-pity for years. And it's, and it's so, the pile is so high that the bed is covered. The bed is covered with not only your, um, not only you, but your issues. And so that's why for your, for you married people, you won't let your spouse close because you have so many issues, so much weight, all over your bed, you have so many pillows with so many issues with fear and self-loathing that you, the, those that bed pile becomes a wall, and not even your spouse can knock it down. Not even your spouse can knock it down, and God saying. I'm coming for all those issues today. I'm coming for all those issues today, and it will be knocked down, whether through a process or whether through, whether through um, immediate healing, it will be knocked down today. You don't have to be, you don't have to live in issues. You don't have to live in fear and pain. The Lord comes to free you. Um, I was listening to a song the other day about being broken and beautiful. And I, I get the sentiment like we're all broken and it's okay to be broken. And to a point that's true. But there comes a point where the Lord wants you to be whole. And that wholeness, uh, that, that shalom of God, that nothing missing, nothing lacking, and nothing broken, is not impossible. It is not impossible for you to live without depression. It is not impossible for you to live without diabetes. It's not impossible for you to live without self-pity. Like, we say, this is the way it's always been and this is the way it's going to be. No, 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 no. God comes to bring freedom. He comes to set the captives free. And he says, you can walk out of it today. And he said to the gentleman, at the pool of Bethesda, he said, take up your bed, that place of comfort, that place where you scattered all those comfy pillows around and you just made a comfortable bed in your misery. He said, take up that comfortable bed that you've made and you've tried to adjust to it take up that bed, get the pillows off, and walk. He said, 
He said today, you can walk into victory. You can walk into freedom. You can walk into salvation. And he is there to walk with you. You don't walk alone. You can walk into freedom today. Freedom can be yours today. All you have to do is say, yes, Lord, and stop with the stories. Stop telling you, yourself these awful stories about what you've been through and that you can never be free from it. You can, because you serve the God of freedom and you serve the I Am God, which, which basically means He is everything that you could possibly want. He says, I am peace, I am joy, I am love, I am relationship. I'm employment. I'm your comforter. He says all that in you. You serve the I am God. All you need to do is just reach out. We say all you need to do is believe. But I'm of the, I'm of the uh, persuasion that you don't even have to believe. You'll get there. All you have to do is reach out on a maybe. All you have to do is reach out on a baby. You don't even have to be certain. You can just reach out on a baby and he'll get you to certainty. He, with his love and with his grace and with patience and with his persistence, um, will get you from, un from a maybe to certainty and he wants you to to come to him as you are come to him with your doubt come to him with your shame come to him broken come to him bleeding and he will patch you up and he will send people and resources that he's ordained to help you and the man said uh, he said to the man, take up your bed and walk. You don't just take up your bed, okay, uh, I'm taking the pillows off, but I'm lying, I'm still lying in the same bed. No, when you take the pillows off and take up your bed, you have to walk, you have to move forward, because you can't, you can't stay stagnant stagnant. The, the problem with uh, some people is when you hear a word like this, it is so easy to, to yes, say, I'm taking the pillows of fear off and all those, those things up and taking up that bed or mat, but I'm just going to stay here because it's going like, because I can't move anywhere. It is so easy to stay with what we know because what we know is safe. The Lord is calling you to go with what you don't know, to walk it out, to move forward, to move into your destiny, to move into your purpose, to move into forgiveness, to move into healing. The Lord is calling you to move, to move, to move in whatever he's ordained for you. You know what he's been speaking to you. You know, you sense what he's calling you to do, but you won't move on it because you're too afraid. A fear is okay. Fear is okay. If it fuels you, not if it stops you. Don't let fear stop you. It's a natural, um, it's a natural place to be in in your life if you're afraid and you know you don't know what's next. But God hasn't called you to know. He's just called you to do and obey, and and He won't let you fall. Just walk in it. You know what he's called you to do. You know what you wake up every morning with. You know 
you know the part of the destiny for your life because you can feel it. You can sense it. You know when you're watching TV and you see a certain uh, gardening show and you're like, I want to do gardens for people, but you're too afraid that you're not good enough with with flowers or whatever to actually um, do gardens for people. The Lord has called you to do those gardens. The Lord has called you to um, to uh, uh, start that real estate business. The Lord has called you to do all those things. All he needs you is to first take up your bed, that place of comfort, that place that you put all those pillows on, and walk. Not just stay there. Because if you just stay there and you take up your bed, you'll eventually fall asleep again. Um, have you ever, um, I don't, people come in and, and uh, get me up so I don't have to sleep in an alarm, with an alarm clock. Um, but for those of you who have to sleep in an alarm clock, have you ever heard the alarm clock go off? Beep, 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 beep. And you hit snooze because you want to stay in bed for five minutes. Well, the Lord says some of you have been hitting the snooze bar for having have, have been hitting the snooze button for ten years and he's like take it off of snooze and get up take it off of sleeping and get up you've been sleeping for ten years you've been sleeping for five years you've been sleeping for two years it's time for you to get up dust yourself off and move forward because sometimes one situation happens in our lives that leaves us stagnant and the Lord wants me to say today stop letting that one situation that one man who left you that one friend who left you that one uh, person who deceived you that one person who was not who they say they were leave you stagnant. The Lord is breaking those chains of some awful words. Somebody under the sound of my voice, they got some awful words from their parents way back when. It wasn't a situation. It was awful words from your parents. And let me tell you something. Those words, brother, sister, they were lies. That person was sent from the pit of hell to, to, to try and damage your destiny. So when that person walked away, though, instead of casting them off like you should have done, you carried their words like a cloak and you believed them. It's time to cast off those negative words that other people have said about you and and sometimes that you've said about yourself and believe what God says about you. And sometimes um, sometimes, sometimes when, I, when I look at the Bible it's hard to People say, see yourself in the scriptures. Sometimes for me, when I look at the Bible, it's hard to see myself in those scriptures because uh, the words um, can apply to me, but other people are reading those words. So I ask God for something crazy. I ask God, give me new words that totally just apply to me. Uh, for my life, and he uh, he has he said he said start he said be a, you're going to be a trailblazer for the entertainment industry 
in books and movies and television and in, in theaters and plays. And I took that personal, personalized word. So everything I do now is to feed into that. Even when I'm reading these secular books, I'm thinking to myself, okay, how would I take this story and change it so that it's kingdom-minded? Or what? What actor I think needs to act in this secular movie because uh, they need to see behind the scenes the love of Jesus. Um, I'm because I'm and I'm always thinking about how to turn either secular things for the kingdom or how to bring. Uh, uh, people who don't know the Lord and who will do this secular film, how to minister to them, what programs to start in Hollywood or Bollywood or other places like that. See, so that personal word, it drives almost everything I do, every email I send. Even if I'm reading something uh, secular, I'm thinking, okay, how can I turn how can I turn a story like this to the kingdom? Uh, and uh, I I did would come to me and I it would be jot down or even a movie. I'm like, okay, if I do this secular movie, how can that how can I'm miniature to those actors who will be in this movie because my calling is not just to create other Christian entertainment. There, there are lots of uh, Christian movies and Christian entertainment out there, but it is part of my calling is to shift culture and how people feel about Christianity and Christian people and the gospel. It's not to just uh, put a nicey, nicey Christian story together and to get more Christian people to watch this Christian movie. There are a lot of people doing that. My thing is to show how Christ can pe can be a part of life, not just in a uh, the 1990 Christian way, but in a real way. And even when I'm, when I'm doing a secular movie, because I will do those as well, um, I will, I want the actors doing that secular movie to even see Jesus in the way I act, the way I, the way I direct them, the way I talk to them, the way I bring uh, the best out of them. I want them to see Jesus all over me, although it's going to be a secular movie set. And I've settled in my purpose that uh, not everybody's going to like what I do. Not everybody's going to approve of what I do, and that's okay. And there is somebody under the sound of my voice now that is dying because they they feel that no nobody's going to accept what I do what they do, but I'm here to tell you that there is somebody that needs what you do the way you do it. There is somebody I'm not for everybody in the preaching department in the movie department or whatever or in the book department, or in the theater department, but I am for somebody. I'm not for everybody, but I'm for somebody, and I'm going to say that to you today, too. I'm not for everybody, but I am for somebody, and that somebody may just not be, not have heard of me yet. That Those 175 subscribers may not be 
who the Lord has ultimately for me yet. That person may be just still out there, but when they need a sermon, I'll be there. It may not be immediate, but I'm telling you, these sermons will change people's lives. And they already are. I'm getting emails and comments almost weekly from sermons I've done years ago and from sermons I've just done from people from England and Africa and just saying, and the U.S., just saying how blessed they've been. And I'm so grateful that God is slowly growing and my the ministry he's put in to me. And as it's slowly growing, he's slowly teaching me. Because as you're going to the Lord's purpose, every snag, every success uh, comes to teach you things or comes to bring something out of you. Every snag or every success comes to teach you things or to bring something out of you. And he's saying, he's saying to you, get up, take the pillows, the comfy pillows that you've laid in forever and that you're snuggling up with and that you're intimate with. Take them off the bed, take up that bed and walk. That's what he's saying to you today. Walk Walk it out. He said, sometimes you're afraid to walk because you don't know where you're going. Sometimes there's no magic answer. You just have to walk it out. So, walk it out, people of God today. Walk it out. Thank you for joining me today. I really, really, really appreciate you. And I really, really do appreciate it and what um, he's actually, uh, he actually ministered today. It is phenomenal. And I, I want to say that I love you so much. And I want to leave you with a word that, that God uh, told me to give you on my birthday. And, um, I, I'm really strange. Um, sometimes, um, the music that ministers to me most, most powerfully is what people call secular music. And the Lord sang on my birthday to, to sing this to you, but, um, he wants me to to give this as a love song um, to you. And he, he said it's for the people that are lost and unsure. And he says, uh, come back to me. He's saying right now, come back to me. And this is just, um, uh, a song called To Love You More by Celine Dion. He said, you've been looking for all these people and all these even things to give you validation and love, but you, but you have to realize I'm right here. And he gave me this song to sing to you. It says, Take me Back into the arms I love me like you did before. Oh, touch me once again and remember when there was no one that you. Don't go, you know you'll break 
community. I was in the doctor's office and I saw all this stuff uh, relating to the LGBT community and and the thing that went through my mind is first of all um, just the lack of compassion that the Christian community has had, and I'm, I'm sorry about that. And um, the other thing was, like, we always talk about this homosexual agenda, but we what what we don't understand is that behind 
those um, lovely, lovely people. It's pain. It's pain. It's rejection. It's, it's, could be mental illness, could be all kinds of things. And the Lord says, I want my people to know that I still love them. And I could love them th more than any man or any woman or any, any kind of life thing you could ever imagine. He says, I'm waiting for them as well. So, if you're, if you're gay or lesbian, he wants me to tell you, or bisexual or transgender, he wants me to tell you that he's waiting for you. And he will give you more love than any man, woman, any kind of, any kind of life, um, journey you could ever think of he's more than that and he loves you and he wants me to tell you forget what you've heard forget what you've heard and find out who he is for yourself and you don't have to change anything by yourself if there's anything to be changed he will change you he will just 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 um, rearrange your life in a way that you could never possibly recognize yourself. And this goes for uh, the heterosexual community too. This part goes for everybody. He, he's not looking for you to change yourself. He's looking for you to come back to him and just say, I need help. And even if you're not sure, it's okay not to be sure. Just take that one step. It doesn't matter who you are. He, he says, just take that one step. Just take that one step. And all you need to do is say whatever you feel, whatever you are going through, whatever you think, whatever you're thinking. Just say it. There doesn't need to be any magic words, even. Like, most pastors say, um, invite him into your life. I don't even say that. Because it's him that has to do the drawing. So, even if you take a first step and say, Lord, I don't know if you're real. I don't know what this whole thing is about. But I just need you to show me or teach me or change me or whatever. What, wherever you are in your life, just say that. It doesn't need to be, or oh, Lord, I accept you into my life or whatever. If you don't, if you're not sure, if you're not ready to say that yet, it's totally okay. Just start where you are and he will continue with that. He will take you from where you are to where he wants you to be. And no, no Christian has the right to tell you that he doesn't want you because you're gay or you're bisexual or whatever. Um, or whatever you are. He wants you. He loves you. He made you. He's for you. And he loves you so much. And he wants me to, to share with a heart of compassion. He's wanting you to, to come um, to him. And he's, and he's just waiting for you. And he wants to love you more than anyone ever could. So thank you. And you don't have to say any fancy words. Just start with where you are. And after you start with where you are, after you're crying on the floor and you just say, Lord, I, I don't know. And that's okay not to know. That's totally okay. All, 
You could just say, Lord, I don't know. I I don't know. I feel kind of the, some stuff that she's saying, but I'm not sure. But after you made that first initial step, and if you need help, and you see the sermon, feel free to Facebook me and uh, or put a comment on this video, and I will be sure to get back to you. And I'm here to tell you that you're not alone and you're loved with an even greater love than you could ever imagine. I'll see you later. My and oh, some people think that if you say just love them, it's kind of weak and whatever. No, but love is the strongest uh, emotion. Love is not weak. Love is strong. When we say to just love people, that's the strongest uh, way to bring people to Christ, just to love them exactly the way they are. And sometimes loving them means telling them the truth. Um, but sometimes it just means embracing them, whether we agree with them or not, whether we think what they're doing is not right or not, just embracing them and just and just leaving it open. And sometimes he will call us to speak to them and call and and have a conversation with them. But that conversation often comes with a relationship. Or he he's preparing that person's heart ahead of time um, to receive uh, the truth. Because if a person is not prepared, they won't receive it. It's like putting something on stony ground. It'll just flop over. But when that person is is open to receiving the truth, um, the Lord the Lord comes in. The Lord may use you to come in and share the gospel with them. So, guys, I'm I went way over time this morning, but the Lord wanted me to so badly share that. Uh, I am so grateful and thankful that you joined me today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. See you next week.